Hey guys, today's topic is gonna be so important, especially for graduating students who are about to take the Netflix, or some people call it Netflix, whatever you call it, is a very crucial exam for pharmacy students that want to become a pharmacist. I'm not gonna go into all the technical details of what you need to do because on the NAPB website has all the information that you need from registration on application process. What I wanna tell you today is how to, materials and resources and how to study for the test to ensure that you'll pass it. Um, again, most of the colleges have a very high passing rate, over 90%. So it's a test that's very doable. You've been doing it for, or you've been at the grind for four years trying to get to this test. So you're pay attention in class and really do your homework and pay attention rotation, most likely you will succeed. So let me go into some resources that I did in the past that I felt was very helpful. First things first, buy the book. You need at least two to three months to prepare. Again, it varies based on how well you study and how much dedicated time you put to it. You can study for three months, but only do an hour a day, it's not gonna cut it. And again, you wanna take this test very, very seriously because your whole career is dependent on it. I'm not trying to put any pressure, but really understand how you wanna study for it. Um, I have purchased a book, Rx Prep, and I think it's probably one of the best prepping books for the Netflix. Um, it is quite expensive. Um, it's $180 depending on where you even if you go to Amazon or go to their original website, it's still about the same price. So, but technically you can share with someone, but it can get very cumbersome. So I would just recommend getting it. Um, I got RX Prep. I also did the high yield course at U of H, one of our um, local college here. And they also provide you a book as well. From my experience, between the two that I find most helpful, I would say the RX Prep materials are more organized um, and I love the charts that they have. That's very helpful too. And then, you know, quick things that you can learn from um, kind of disease state. So what I do, and sometimes you don't want to be too overwhelmed with the number of course, I would try to stick to one max, two resources to learn about Netflix because you can also use your notes as well and be strategic. Um, what I do that helped me as well is that I sit down, I'm a very agenda-driven person, so I would mark my calendar by which date will I finish a chapter. And what I usually do is I'll do the harder chapters first. So if let's say infectious disease and HIV is not my thing, so I will actually try to tackle it. So you don't have to go in the order of the Rx prep content, just go based on what is your weakness and what you want to um, get more details or get additional information on and trying to learn on that particular part. So that's one thing. Um, so set a schedule, set a date, and when you probably have to wait until you get clearance from the school first before you go and register for the Netflix itself. Um, let's see what else I have. So Rx Prep, like I said, is probably one of the best resources out there. Set a calendar, get a buddy. Um, again, it depends on your study style. If you're more of an individual and wanna do your own thing, more respect to you. If you're an individual that needs to talk it out with somebody or have someone to keep you accountable, find a buddy that you click with, that you're able to know that you can keep each other on track and study and set an agenda. Or it could be as um, if you're a solo, studier or solo person that want to study by yourself, then you can just have another person to keep you accountable, say, all right, by this date, we need to get this done and do the quizzes together. Lastly, the NAPP actually have kind of a mock exam. Um, I think it's $50 when I took it. It could be a bit different now, but what I would recommend is also look at that because I felt like that kind of give you some preparations and expectations on what you should do your for um, in terms of expectation for your NAPLEX 
um, read their bulletin before you go to the actual test because that will help you kind of know what to expect. Um, the calculator will be online. You're not allowed to bring anything in, um, really. So just, I would definitely do their test just so it can kind of give you a good sense of feeling what that looks like. And then just read over their information, what needs to be brought in, like two IDs, what are acceptable, all those logistical stuff are on the website, so I'm not gonna go over it. Um, all right, I think that's pretty much it. So let's me recap. One, get the book. And I would recommend Rx Prep just because it's made by a pharmacist for pharmacy students and the book are very, very thorough. Two, set a calendar schedule when you wanna finish study by because you'll never be ready when you're on the test. Um, or the day of the test, you always like, oh, I'm gonna cram, don't cram. So set a schedule, set a calendar, give yourself at least a day to rest or power it down because at the last day, no matter how much you study, it won't help. Just make sure you, it's probably better that you're able to sleep, get some food, get some nutrition. Three, if you're able and you want to, form a study buddy group or a former study buddy or at least have an accountability buddy um, if you're studying by yourself just to keep you guys motivated fourth take the fifty dollar or however their practice test online when you feel you're comfortable i wouldn't wait until the very very end when you're about to take a test i would say at least a month or so before your test and kind of take that test and see how you do and even if you didn't do well don't freak out because there's all it's just a practice test, so it's not necessarily reflective of the exam. And there's a lot of um, the question they had on there may not be, you know, again, the difficulty level, the range. So it, it varies. So don't freak out if you're like, gosh, gosh, I failed this practice test. How am I going to do on the real test? It's not like that. It's just basically trying to see how you're doing. And that's why I said don't wait until the end because you don't want to get freaked out because you have at least another month to kind of like, okay, I can do this. And yes, you can do this. You can definitely, definitely do this. Um, it's very doable. You just gotta be focused and focus on your weak areas first. And the ones that you know you kind of know really well, wait until the very end. I hope this was helpful. For those that have taken the NatPlex before, please um, put comments, feedback, and share your advice with others that are going through this process. Have a great one and best of luck.